Good afternoon to you. Mark South of HurricaneTrack.com here. It's Friday, the 6th of May, 2022, and today we're going to wrap up our discussion of the different hazards from tropical cyclones, the SWIFT method, storm surge, wind, inland flooding, and tornadoes. Tornadoes, the T. That's what we're going to talk about today. Understanding tornadic threats from tropical cyclones. I think these are the least understood of the impacts. Um, I've never seen one myself. I've almost driven through a tornadic cell. That was Hurricane Irene back in 2011. That was at night in eastern North Carolina. I'm going to show you a radar example from that in just a moment. One big misconception is that the eye wall, and I showed you that yesterday on a radar image. I'm going to show you again today. Maybe it was the day before when we were talking about wind. Um, the eye wall is where the tornadoes are. Well, that is not going to be the case. Usually the tornadoes are going to happen in the outer bands of a depression, a storm, or a hurricane. It doesn't matter the intensity. Weak tropical storms, if they're in the right environment with a lot of shear and just overall instability, especially over land, and that's where tornadoes happen, of course, is over land. Um, but once these cyclones get inland, they can be prolific tornado producers. We saw that in 2021 with Ida. We've seen it as far back in time as Beulah. What was that, 1967, Camille produced tornadoes, Ivan in 2004, as I mentioned, um, 2011 with Irene, and there are other examples back in time of these very prolific tornado producing remnants, especially of tropical storms and hurricanes, because the whole atmosphere is turning. It's already turning, and then you get these thunderstorms that build vertically through the atmosphere, and if conditions are just right, you get to bend that atmosphere just like we see with the big supercell thunderstorms, you start to rotate locally a thunderstorm. It becomes a little supercell, and that's what a thunderstorm that rotates is called, is a supercell. Uh, and then you get a tornado, and they are usually brief, uh, which is good, but on the other hand, they can also still produce locally pretty severe damage. And again, there's no rhyme or reason as to exactly which environments are going to be conducive for more tornadoes over others in terms of trying to predict it well ahead of time. Your key is to be aware. Use something like radar scope. Make sure that your smartphone or your tablet, like that one that's just beeping at me, is giving you alerts uh, right on your phone or your NOAA weather radio because you may only have minutes. And if it's during the hurricane itself, like in the outer bands of a hurricane that's coming, you may not even know that a tornado is coming. You won't hear it, that distinctive roar uh, that we get with the big supercell based tornadoes like we see out on the Great Plains. So Irene is an example here. This is the write-up about Irene from the National Weather Service out of Moorhead City. There's the track of Irene back in September of 2011. Different radar depictions. That's the reflectivity. These are some of the uh, rainfall amounts that occurred, the very heavy rains. And then there was the tornado outbreak. And this is one particular scan here showing the couplet these little kidney bean shaped areas, there's one there, there's another one, and this one actually had a tornado with it. Uh, Highway 64 comes out through here and makes its way across the Alligator River and eventually out to the Outer Banks, and um, it's something like that. Maybe it goes more to the north. But uh, I was traveling on that, picking up a colleague of ours from the airport in Raleigh, and we were coming back, and this uh, cell was moving from east to west, rotating with the circulation of Irene on shore, and we almost drove through that. It was uh, We actually saw some of the debris from it. And we were thinking, wow, it's really windy here. And it turns out that it hit this little small community out here. There were some farms that were damaged. And there was actually several tornadoes from Irene back in 2011. And again, here's an example going back to Laura. Where's the tornado threat going to be? It's going to be out here in the outer bands of the hurricane, not in the eye wall itself. This is already a, a very intense area of deep convection, and you get these little swirls that come through here that are called mesovortices. Those are different. They're similar to tornadoes, but they are not true tornadoes. I would be looking for areas like this right here, these little notches that look like kidney beans, and they're transient. They can come and go very quickly. Um, you can get water spouts over land, and then they rotate on shore, and they become a tornado, just as an example. So awareness and you know understanding how fast you can get to your safe place in your home your structure wherever you're going to be that is the key to really being prepared for tropical cyclone tornadoes again they are very different 
than those on the Great Plains where you can see the big supercell wrap up, the lowering of the cloud base. Tropical cyclone induced tornadoes happen much faster and they happen hundreds of miles from the coast even days after landfall. Even from the weakest of tropical storms, they can produce a lot of tornadoes. So just keep that in mind. I mean, that's about it. That's about all I can cover. Um, it is one of the hazards. It's, again, the least understood and I think the least prepared for because you have the shortest lead time. So, again, my best advice, get a radar app like Radar Scope on your smartphone, your tablet. Enable the uh, weather alert uh, system that comes through your phone. You know, those can be annoying sometimes, but make sure that is available. And as they say, have multiple ways to receive warnings. You want it through your smartphone, your tablet, and a NOAA weather radio. Go down to the store, Walmart, whatever, Lowe's, wherever, Amazon, and buy a NOAA weather radio. Program it to your local area and get those tornado warnings when they come out because you're only going to have minutes, and in some cases, maybe even seconds, to get into an interior room, protect your noggin, get your head protected as best you can in case one of those tornadoes comes through. Again, usually they're brief, but they still can be violent, most of them on the low end of the EF scale, but still, 120, 130 miles per hour, you start to get into those EF3 ranges, that's bad enough. Even 80, 90 mile per hour local tornado coming through can wreak havoc on your property, tear trees down, the trees can damage your house, and cause problems, so it's best to be aware, be prepared, and be ready when these come in. All right, so that pretty much wraps it up. We dis uh, discussed the, again, this new method of looking at things swift, storm surge, wind, inland flooding, and tornadoes, the National Hurricane Center, um, a good resource for all of this information when a hurricane is threatening. We'll be on top of it. We're on Twitter and Facebook and YouTube. Those are our main social media outlets. Of course, we are supported through our community of crowdfunding folks over at Patreon. So jump on patreon.com, search Hurricane Track, or download the Patreon app and look for Hurricane Track, all one word, and you can become, hey, we got Discord going on, so we can chat in there. And that's a good way to keep you up to date what's going on. Our people will be on top of any tornado threats this hurricane season and beyond. Um, they'll know. We'll know. So get in, get in on the community. Um, and that really is the key is to to understanding and, and getting ready for a tornado and a hurricane is being aware of it. Again, seconds can count, so make sure that you have a way to get those alerts when the time comes. Hopefully it won't come, but if it does, we want you to be safe and sound. All right? All right, well, that'll do it for the uh, acronym SWIFT. Again, storm surge, wind, inland flooding, and tornadoes. The Saffir-Simpson scale is helpful. I think the SWIFT method of understanding those four main hazards and then outside of those hazards, there are rip currents, which are also problematic and can be deadly. But surge, wind, inland flooding, and tornadoes are the four biggest of the hazards. And we covered those this week. I appreciate you tuning in each and every time. I'll be back Monday with a uh, full hurricane outlook and discussion. We'll see what might be brewing out there as we get closer and closer to the start of the 2022 hurricane season. Have a good weekend. Thanks, as always, for tuning in. I'm Mark Suddeth. We'll talk again on Monday.